Next, we can study female reproductive system. The female reproductive organs include the ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus and vagina. The female germ cells or eggs are made in the ovaries. They are also responsible for the production of hormones like estrogen and progesterone. The ovaries are a pair of small oval organs in the lower part of the abdominal cavity. At the time of birth, a female already has thousands of immature ova in her ovaries. Many of these degenerate during childhood. The ova start maturing when the female reaches puberty. Every 28 days, one of the ovaries releases an ovum. This is called ovulation. When an ovum is released from the ovary, it is taken up by a thin fallopian tube through its funnel-shaped opening. Fallopian tube is also called as oviduct. The ovum is passed down the duct and into the uterus which passes it out of the body through the vagina. The ovum is very small and therefore hardly noticeable. The fallopian tubes or oviducts are a pair of thin tubes that lead from the ovaries to the uterus. Each fallopian tube has a funnel-shaped opening near the ovary. It is lined by cilia. The movement of cilia helps conduct the ovum down the fallopian tube and into the uterus. Now see children, what is uterus? The uterus is a hollow pear-shaped elastic muscular structure. Its upper portion into which the fallopian tubes enter is broader. The narrow lower portion called cervix consists of a ring of muscles. The uterus opens into the vagina through the cervix. A fertilized ovum that is zygote develops into a baby inside the uterus. The vagina is the organ where the penis is inserted during intercourse for the discharge of sperms. It is also the passage through which the fully developed baby is born. When semen, semen means sperm along with the fluid, is discharged in the vagina during sexual intercourse, the sperms begin moving up the vagina and uterus, finally reaching the fallopian tubes. Fallopian tube is the site of fertilization in human beings. Only one sperm enters the ovum. Most of the sperms die while climbing up the fallopian tubes. A sperm can remain alive in the fallopian tube for about 12 hours. In this span of time, if it meets the ovum, it is likely to enter the ovum. This is called fertilization. Let us study the changes after fertilization. The fertilized egg, that is say goat, moves down the fallopian tube and continuously undergoes cell division. Thus it forms a hollow ball of cells called an embryo. The embryo gets embedded in the wall of the uterus, which is thick and has muscles, glands 
and a large number of blood capillaries. This process is called implantation. We have seen in the earlier sections that the mother's body is designed to undertake the development of the child. Hence, the uterus prepares itself every month to receive and nurture the growing embryo. The lining thickens and is richly supplied with blood to nourish the growing embryo. The developing embryo at first derives nourishment directly from the mother's blood flowing in the vessels lining the uterine wall. In about three weeks, it starts absorbing food and oxygen through a special tissue called placenta. Placenta is a disc which embedded in the uterine wall. It contains villi on the embryo side of the tissue. On the mother's side are blood spacers which surround the villi. This provides a large surface area for glucose and oxygen to pass from mother to the embryo. The developing embryo will also generate waste substances which can be removed by transferring them into the mother's blood through the placenta. The embryo is connected to the placenta by a tube called the umbilical cord. By 8 weeks, the embryo starts showing the human features and is referred to as fetus. The total period of embryonic development from the time of fertilization to birth is called gestation period. It is around 280 days or 9 months in humans. The wall of the uterus develops a thick layer of muscles during pregnancy. At the time of birth, the uterine muscles contract rhythmically and powerfully, causing labor pains to the mother. Finally, the baby is expelled by the contraction of the uterine muscles. This is called birth, that is childbirth or patrician. What happens when the egg is not fertilized? If the ovum is not fertilized in the upper part of the oviduct or fallopian tube, it keeps on descending and is finally passed out through the vagina. It remains in the body for about 24 to 72 hours. As an egg is released for fertilization every month, the uterus also prepares itself every month for the implantation of a fertilized egg. The uterus becomes thick-walled and spongy in order to nourish the embryo. If no fertilization takes place, the thick uterine wall is no longer needed. So it gradually begins to shrink. This shrinkage ruptures its blood vessels. As a result, blood and mucus ooze out of the vagina. This period, which lasts for 3 to 5 or 7 days, is called the menstrual period. And the process is called menstruation. If the ovum is fertilized, it gets implanted in the uterus wall and embryonic development starts. In this case, the uterus continues to develop in order to hold the embryo. And in this case, there is no question of its shrinkage and resulting in menstruation. Reproductive Health According to the World Health Organization, reproductive health means a total well-being in all aspects of reproduction that is physical, emotional, 
behavioral and social thus a society with a people having physically and functionally normal reproductive organs and normal emotional and behavioral interaction among them in all sex related aspects might be called reproductively healthy now let us discuss the problems and strategies of reproductive health that is population explosion and uh, birth control as you know that india is highly populated nation with a high rate of population growth all resources of the country get consumed in trying to meet the basic requirement of the population nothing is left for development in a large family the income of the bread earner is insufficient to provide proper education and upbringing to the children therefore there is a need to get married only when a person is fully mature and capable of proper earning there is also a need to prevent some pregnancies and spacing out the birth of the children in such a way that every child can be properly looked after and provided education besides this pregnancy in early stages adversely affects the health of the baby as well as that of the mother as the body of the lady is not yet ready to bear the burden of carrying and nourishing a fetus as we have seen the process of sexual maturation is gradual and takes place while the general body growth is still going on therefore some degree of sexual maturation does not necessarily mean that the body or mind is ready for sexual acts or for having and bringing up children we must also consider the possible health consequence of having sex sexual act is a very intimate connection of bodies the diseases or infections which are transmitted through sexual intercourse with the infected persons are called sexually transmitted diseases the sexually transmitted diseases are mainly caused by bacteria and virus stds that means sexually transmitted diseases caused by bacteria are gonorrhea and syphilis then stds caused by viruses are aids aids means acquired immunodeficiency syndrome it is caused by human immunodeficiency virus then genital warts and hepatitis b the sexual act always has the potential to lead to pregnancy pregnancy will make major demands on the body and mind of the woman and if she is not ready for it her health will be adversely affected therefore many ways have been devised to avoid pregnancy the various methods of family planning are called contraceptive devices they are as follows first one mechanical methods or barrier methods the physical devices that prevent the fusion of sperm and ovum that is fertilization are called barrier methods 
These physical devices are available for both males and females. That are condoms. It is a tubular rubber sheath which is worn over penis during coitus. Condom also prevents the spread of sexually transmitted diseases. Then cervical cap. It is a rubber nipple that is fitted over the cervix during coitus. Then the third one, vaginal diaphragm. It is a tubular sheath with the flexible metal ring that is fitted in and over the vagina during coitus. Next contraceptive method is chemical methods or hormonal methods. They suppress the production of ovum. The common hormonal method is oral pills. They contain progesterone along or along with the estrogen. The tablets prevents conception even after coitus. Hormonal methods can cause some side effects in some ladies due to disturbance in hormonal balance. Next, intrauterine contraceptive device or IUCD. These devices are inserted in the uterus through vagina to prevent pregnancy. Example, loops, copper tea that are fitted in the uterus. IUCDs prevent the passage of sperms into the fallopian tubes. Sometimes these can cause side effects due to irritation of the uterus. Next is surgical methods. These contraception are sterilization method. And these methods block gamete transport to prevent fertilization as well as pregnancy. These methods are safe in the long run. Sterilization methods are of two types. One is vasectomy. It is a method of male sterilization. Here small pieces of the two vas deferens are cut. And the cut ends are tied separately. It is called as vasectomy. Next is tubectomy. It is a method of female sterilization. Here small pieces of the two fallopian tubes are cut and the cut ends are tied separately. It is called as tubectomy. Misuse of surgical method. Surgery can also be used for removal of unwanted pregnancies. These may be misused by people who do not want a particular child as happens in illegal sex selection abortion of female fetus. Because of reckless female feticides, child sex ratio is declining at an alarming rate in some sections of our society. Prenatal sex determination has been prohibited by law. For a healthy society, the female-male ratio must be maintained. Now you know various contraceptive methods. What could be the reasons for adopting contraceptive methods? That are to prevent unwanted pregnancies, to control population rise or birth rate, to prevent the transfer of sexually transmitted diseases or STD, then better health of the women and have smaller economically viable families etc. Okay.